Hey guys, it's Sandeep from Drive Atlas and in this video I thought of discussing something that's kind of become a big deal nowadays. So videos about this particular agency or brand or scores from these agency or brand have kind of been uh, done before. MKBHD has done a really nice video and I don't think this would be better than the video that Marcus did. But then again, I see a lot of people in the comment section commenting uh, regarding this and asking my opinion on the same. So I thought it will at least be fair to kind of give my opinion on the same to my viewers so that they get a better understanding on what's right and what's wrong or just what to expect and what it overall means. So the topic in question is DxO Mark and their scores. Most recently, OnePlus 7 Pro got a DxO Mark score of 111. That's kind of uh, like right up there with the rest of the bunch, Huawei P30 Pro, Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, Pixel 3, etc. in terms of the score itself. Now, does that necessarily mean that the OnePlus 7 Pro is one of the best cameras on the market? Uh, in terms of our findings, what we posted in the camera review as well as the comparison with the Note 7 Pro, etc., uh, no, it does not mean that it's one of the best cameras in the world and I'll I'll explain why So the way that DxO Mark scores their camera phones or smartphones is very different from how us reviewers kind of score camera phones or smartphones um, At the very basis we kind of give points or you know the score based on the quality of an image so that can be attributed to multiple things such as the white balancing, the focusing speeds, uh, you know, the overall sharpness, the dynamic range, you know, how well, uh, you know, the colors are rendered, all these sort of things. Mm -hmm. So while uh, DxO Mark also takes a lot of these things into consideration, they also have a few other parameters that kind of uh, changes the way that the final score comes into play. So if you take OnePlus 7 Pro, for example, the score of 111 uh, is a combination of both the photo score and the video score. Now in the photo score, it did 118, which is just one shot of the Huawei P30 Pro, which got 119. And that to me personally is the best camera phone on the market, both in terms of the overall image quality and the versatility. I mentioned it's very versatile because it has an ultra wide angle camera, can do great macros. It can do telephotos with unbelievable amounts of zoom. And uh, if you're looking at just the basic quality from the main sensor, then I would say that probably the Pixel devices, the Pixel 3, Pixel 3 XL, probably does even better than the Huawei P30 Pro. But if you look at the score that the Pixel 3 or 3 XL got on the XO Mark, it's not very high. And it's notably lower than even the OnePlus 7 Pro. Now, what's the reason for this? And does that mean that, you know, when DxO Mark scores it higher than Pixel 3, does it mean OnePlus 7 Pro is better? Hell no. If you actually compare these devices side by side, anyone who has ever used a Pixel device will swear by it and say that it is the best camera phone available on the market if you just want a single phone, a single device to do almost everything and know blindly that you can get a good photo. So the Pixel devices, the way that they have kind of tweak the software in, uh, you know, um, in, in, in essence with the hardware is wonderful. The hardware is not the best available on the market. Uh, in terms of great hardware, Huawei has probably the best hardware. They have a great sensor, they have great optics for telephoto, ultra wide, etc. And along with some software tweaking, you get great results. But Pixel devices, what Google has done is nothing short of magic in how they get amazing results out of such little hardware. So if you couple, say, Huawei hardware with Pixel software, that's going to be really, really amazing. So that's where the software comes into play. And that's precisely the reason why I say that OnePlus devices aren't that great in terms of camera. To start things off, OnePlus devices have always had subpar cameras compared to most of the other competitors or, you know, other devices on the market. And, you know, their marketing material or whatever they say during announcement always points to them having the absolute best camera setup possible. But when you actually try it, you don't really get that same experience. Uh, the reason for this is primarily attributed to the software processing. So while Google has exceptionally good software processing, the software processing on OnePlus devices is not really good. Now there was a post about 
OnePlus devices, uh, you know, and the software processing and all these other things in the community, which a friend of mine linked to me, Bishal from Gadget Central, and uh, I took a look at it. And uh, what they're saying is um, that, you know, uh, images or photos are very subjective. It depends on a person's opinion. And they're saying that some people prefer a more saturated look, some people prefer a more natural look, and that's true. That's true. Like like everything else, like in terms of food, some people like spicy, some people like salty, some people like bland or like a more natural sort of feel. But at the end of the day, everyone has their own taste and, you know, their own picks. But that is the way the processing goes in terms of the, you know, saturation and a few other aspects. But some of the core aspects, such as the dynamic range and these other things, are stuff that isn't subjective. They are supposed to be uh, universally applicable and the better the dynamic range, the better it is for everyone. No one sort of says that, no, I don't like more dynamic range. That's, that doesn't happen that way. So these kind of factors are what actually brings down a device overall in terms of the, uh, you know, the look and feel. So when I look at a OnePlus 7 Pro, I see that there is a huge uh, lost opportunity because the camera sensors are good. The primary sensor is a Sony IMX 586, which uh, is pretty good and I've seen several other phones use it in much better way but the software processing is just not there yet now when it comes to DxO Mark scoring uh, the reason why OnePlus got such high score is because they also have zoom so if you look at the scoring system there is a separate zoom tab on the scores uh, that DxO Mark puts for smartphones so if you look at phones such as the Google Pixel there is just a single camera at the back so regardless of the fact that it provides much better quality images with better dynamic range, sharpness, detailing, etc., it still does not score as high on the zoom level as a result of it having just a single camera. So this is where phones such as the Huawei P30 Pro or OnePlus 7 Pro kind of get ahead and score higher on the zoom range and as a result that translates to a higher point in the you know, final result. So just because it has that room, zoom range, it gives it an advantage and this is kind of easy to game. So there are many manufacturers out there who kind of have understood the way the system works in DxO Mark scoring and as a result have kind of tweaked their devices to perform better, at least when DxO Mark test, tests it. And what OnePlus also says is that they've actually given a firmware or a version uh, of the camera or the device, the OnePlus 7 Pro, which has a different firmware uh, and software uh, sort of build compared to what we reviewers or anyone else on the market is currently having or using. Now, I have two questions with that. One, why is it different? If, if it is uh, uh, supposed to be the same for everyone, why have they given a different uh, sort of software to DxO Mark in the first place if they wanted it to be the same and if they were so confident about the camera? Number two, okay, let it be different, it's fine. But why are they giving us a subpar software to test, uh, you know, if it was ready in the first place? I mean, I don't think that they would be giving a half-baked software to DxO Mark to test, considering that that would cause issues with stability and all of other things. If the app crashes, it's not good. If it produces mixed results, it's not good. That would affect the overall score. If that's the case, why haven't they given us the DxO Mark firmware and the software to begin with? So it's kind of shady there. I don't know what really happened. But at the end of the day, I have very little hope that OnePlus is going to drastically change the quality that OnePlus 7 Pro has compared to what it has right now. I mean, certain software tweaks and updates and fixes can improve the quality. But unless they totally rewrite their algorithm, it's not going to get fixed completely. What I've noticed in the past devices of OnePlus and even the OnePlus 7 Pro is that they tend to have very high ISO. They tend to have excessive noise reduction, which knows out all the details on sharpness. The telephoto mode is also not very good. The portrait mode is also not very good because it has bleeding onto the subject or object. And even the softness on the portion uh, that's desired to be in focus is also high. So all these factors put together is why I said that OnePlus 7 Pro is not really a great camera phone, especially for the price. If it was five years earlier, you know, when the OnePlus One came and the device was around 22K, that was amazing. Back then also the camera was kind of subpar, but then it had many other things like the device has now to put it 
ahead of the competition. So the 7 Pro is still probably the best when it comes to performance, it's still the best when it comes to the ch charging speed, it's still the best when it comes to the screen. But the camera has not improved, it's not reached the level that it's supposed to reach, especially now that it's competing head to head with flagships like Samsung and Huawei. So uh, what does the score mean? The score of 118, um, we, we humans or the, the way that we have, uh, or the way that education has taught us is that the higher the number, the better it automatically is. Like for example, everyone knows that $10 is more than $1. Everyone knows that if you get 100 out of 100 marks, that's better than 90 out of 100 marks. So this sort of thinking is present in everyone's mind. So uh, naturally, when manufacturers see this happening, it results in several other trends in the market, such as the megapixel race. Back in the day, during the pre-touchscreen smartphone era, you used to have smartphones having 2 megapixel, 3 megapixel, 5 megapixel, 8 megapixel, 12 megapixel. So this megapixel race started happening, and in the eyes of the consumer, uh, especially back then, where uh, you know the internet was not filled with as much information and people had less access to the internet, people didn't really realize that bigger the number or more the megapixels does not automatically mean that it's better than something else. The various other parameters that come into play here. So for example, the uh, sensor, the Sony having 586 being used in the OnePlus 7 Pro is great. It's a half inch sensor with 0.8 micron pixel size, 48 megapixels of resolution. Uh, so when you pixel bin it, bring it down to 12 megapixels of resolution, use it with the 1.6 micron pixel size, it does really well coupled with 1.6 aperture and optical image stabilization, it should be amazing. But the fact of the matter is, it's not drastically better than the Note 7 Pro, which has the same sensor, uh, albeit with a small f1.8 aperture and without a wires. So the reason for this is again down to software processing. So OnePlus can truly uh, make their phones better if they want to, but I think they'll have to start from scratch in terms of the overall image processing. There's a lot of flaws that I can see, there are a lot of issues. Um, now, uh, credit to DxO Mark where it's due because I think that they have com come up with a system that kind of can be applied across the board to devices and can be tested across devices. But this, uh, this reliance of ours on scores just to understand which is better uh, is kind of the issue that we have with scores and the, to begin with. For example, now the Honor 20 Pro which has a similar but also different camera setup compared to the OnePlus 7 Pro has scored the exact same 111 on DxO mark. So does that mean that you will get practically the same experience, identical experience on both phones? No, that's not what it means. Because the Honor 20 Pro has a macro camera. So imagine you are someone who shoots a lot of macro shots and you want something like that. Then the Honor 20 Pro by default becomes better for you. So there are various other factors other than the score that really comes into play when deciding what a camera is and what a camera shouldn't be. So for anyone who wants a fixed focal length, that's fine, but wants the utmost uh, brilliant image quality, the Pixel devices are probably the best there. If you want the best video recording, you should go for the iPhone or maybe Samsung devices. If you want the most versatile camera setup with still great image quality, go for Huawei devices. But the XO Mark scores or any other scores at the end of the day is not something that you should be relying on to make your camera edition. Go check out the other camera reviews from you know NKBHD, Mr. Phone. There's so many out there. Uh, watch multiple reviews. Don't just watch our reviews. Don't just watch one single person's reviews. Uh, get as much information as possible. Watch as many camera reviews or whatever it is. Uh, see all the images. Uh, understand what they're talking about the images. Like, you know, if they say it's oversaturated, if they say that it's quite natural, does it support RAW? Uh, speaking of which, RAW is probably the best thing you can get if you have RAW capture on your smartphone that allows you to tweak the image to your own liking. So you capture in RAW, tweak it the way you want, keep it natural, keep it saturated, keep it uh, high contrast, uh, neutral contrast, whatever you like, get it the way you want, that's probably the best. But the majority of people, they want a phone that can actually just take a photo and they are free to share on social media. When that's the case, uh, that's when image processing comes into play and that's why I don't recommend the OnePlus 7 Pro uh, over some of the other competitors. So the, the photos and videos, just like audio, 
are very subjective. It, it depends on your personal preference. So rather than just relying on scores to make your decision, it's really important that you kind of understand what these scores imply. So look at these scores, look at the rating. Most people I see just looks at the overall score. If they see 111, that's higher than 108. Automatically, they think that the smartphone with 111 is better than the smartphone with 108. It might be better in some cases, which resulted in the higher score overall. But it does not mean it's overall better in every single field compared to the other smartphone with 108, for example. So take a look, read even DxO Mark. Uh, and its reviews in detail, understand what they mean, and then come to a decision on your own rather than, rather than just relying on the final score to make your decision. So I hope that has made some sense. I don't know, I just rambled on and on for quite a bit now. <laughs> I don't know if anyone got any sense of what I was trying to say. Uh, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section below. Uh, and uh, we have just completed two years at Drive Atlas. Now we have uploaded 483 odd videos. This might be the next one that's coming up. And um, it's been a great journey. Thank you all for your wonderful support over the years. Uh, it's been crazy. I can't believe that two years has passed. But the stats um, and the comments and the feedback that we get from you guys kind of shows how uh, we have been able to kind of uh, put, put, put across videos that kind of help you guys make an informed decision and i hope this video does the same as well uh please do subscribe if you like this video thank you so much from the bottom of my heart see you again in the next one